Hey everybody, welcome to Cash Sports and welcome to another edition where we're going to be talking about the NBA Finals which just concluded with the Golden State Warriors winning another title in the 2021 to 2022 season. And we're excited to talk about it because we had a prediction in place and now the NBA season concluded so we're going to talk about what's down. But before we get into that, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe to Cash Sports if you want more. And while you're at it, Click that notification button if you want more content when we drop it. Give you a second to do that. Did it? Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, I said it. Golden State Warriors were going to win the title in this playoffs. Steph Curry got his first NBA Finals MVP. That being said, it was worth it. I mean, Steph Curry and the Warriors, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, they had a rough couple seasons. Steph Curry got injured. Klay Thompson was out for at least two years. So it was looking rough for the, for the Warriors as where they weren't even in title contention for the past two years. And now the Warriors have four titles within recent years. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green got four championships. Now, Arthur, tell the people how wrong you were. Well, can't lie. I'm disappointed. But, no, why are you disappointed? Because I'm not disappointed. There's particular aspects of that game that I'm really disappointed about. And that aspect is Jason Tatum. He's supposed to be a superstar, the leader of the team. And he sold his team tremendously. He was 33% at field goal. And he was just getting tossed around like, like a towel. He had five turnovers and three fouls. And, and a really disappointing game for someone like him. Uh, no, I agree. Jason Tatum didn't play particularly phenomenal in this series. But he played his heart out. He had some great stats. I mean, the turnovers for the Boston Celtics were killing. I mean, the Warriors in this series, they were averaging like 10 steals in this series. I mean, Jason Tatum, for the star that he was this season, he only averaged 21 points, even though that is still good stats. But the fact that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown weren't playing phenomenally well throughout the whole game, Jason Tatum had 30 points this game, but in the past game, he didn't play phenomenally well. And that game, that was a very crucial game for them to win, in which that brought them down 3-2 in the series. Like today, the Celtics only had four baskets and four turnovers in the fourth quarter. That's absolutely not acceptable, especially in an elimination game. I mean, this year, the Boston Celtics were 3-0 in an elimination game in the playoffs. And the Warriors were 0-3 on the road when it came to elimination games in this playoffs. But there was also some very phenomenal defense on the Warriors end. I mean, whenever Draymond Green was guarding Jalen Brown, he was one for 14 from the three. Jalen Brown isn't even a phenomenal three-point shooter. That is just enough to throw the Celtics off their course. And, and we first off, we got to give a lot of credit to Steph Curry because he is Finals MVP. And he averaged over 30 in this NBA Finals. And he deserved it. Even though I feel like personally he deserved the first Finals MVP, but this one makes it all the more sweet. What do you think about that? Certainly it did put the work in. I would debate that Wiggins should have deserved it, but that's just me. You see, while Steph Curry was a major aspect on the offensive side, Wiggins was not only a major aspect on the offensive side, but also on the defensive side. He's Definitely a second best player on the team and and I'd say throughout the series he's made quite an impact and deserves That finals MVP. Nah, bro. That's a dub. I'm sorry if Ste if you're talking about Steph Curry averaged 30 points and averaged 43% from the three Even though Andrew Riggins was a very crucial part and a, a very big reason in why they won the series He deserves a lot of credibility but that doesn't mean he deserves finals MVP. You know, like the Warriors are in this position because of Steph Curry, with the scoring of Steph Curry. You know, Steph Curry had the most threes in two finals. In 2016, 
he had the most ever in history with 32. And this year, he has 31. That's the most ever in the NBA final. But I will give credit to where credit is due because Andrew Riggins carried most of the defensive assignment on the team. I mean, Jason Tatum, you're right. Jason Tatum didn't play well at all. In an elimination game, he had only 12 points and five turnovers. You can't win a championship like that, especially when you're playing at home. But on Wiggins' case, he had more points than Clay. He led both teams in rebounds. He led both teams in shots contested. He was second in blocks. And he was holding Jason Tatum 37% shooting from the three. Not great, but it's just enough to still put them ahead. Because from the mid-range, that's where Jason Tatum was getting a lot of his bad shots. It was from inside the three, not from outside the three. Because he actually shot pretty well from outside the three. And also another player that we got to shout out is Gary Payton. He had 15 points coming off the bench. And he had the highest plus minus in his finals with plus 20. The thing that really hurt Jason Tatum in this playoffs and really and what resulted in his demise was the fact that he was the first ever NBA player to have 100 turnovers in the NBA postseason. I mean, Jason Tatum was a great player, but stats like that is not going to result you into winning an NBA championship. But Jason Tatum has a lot to learn. He's a young player. I think he's accomplished a lot so far in his career. I can definitely see Jason Tatum coming back and winning a title in the near future. Because if they can get this far, who's to say they can't do it again? But now to talk about the finals MVP with Steph Curry. Steph Curry is one of the few players to have four rings and two plus MVPs in their career. The only other players to have this is Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, LeBron James and Tim Duncan. And now you can add Steph Curry to that list. He's one of those great players and he's definitely gonna be a Hall of Famer in the near future, as soon as he retires, if you know what I mean. You got anything you wanna add on? Previously I've mentioned how there were some disappointed parts about Celtics' performance this game. And I've gotta point out their defense in general. You see, Warriors were able to have the longest scoring run in the finals game over the last 50 years. They were able to go 21-0, which is well, quite embarrassing for a team that's supposed to have the best defensive team in the league right now. Oh, I definitely agree with that. I mean, their defense really got shot in this game. I mean, they got hit hard, the Warriors came out hard, and they weren't slacking at art in this game. But this is what I was talking about when I was talking about the Warriors championship DNA. And you've seen it. For a team like the Warriors to come on the road and do what they did, that was a very important thing for them to do. And they sealed the fate. They did exactly what they needed to do in a game like this. Because even though they would have lost this game and then go to game seven in the Chase Center, it's still on even playing field. Even though they're playing at home. Because Everything is on the line. Game seven, you don't, you still don't want to go to game seven because that still gives the team hope. And he, I don't want to talk too down on Jason Tatum because he still had a very fantastic postseason. I mean, he was first in points. He was first in assists this postseason. He was Eastern Conference Final MVP. He was the youngest player ever with 600 points, 100 rebounds, and 100 assists. He beat KD, Giannis, and Jimmy Butler. He dropped 46 when he was down 3-2 to the Bucks. He dropped 13 assists in the finals debut and won two game sevens this postseason. So the Celtics don't have anything to beat themselves up about. I mean, it's disappointing at the end of the day, but when you're in a position like this and you're a young team, it's not like the Suns where Chris Paul is older and DeAndre Aiden is looking at leaving the team this year. Mm -hmm. So it's not that bad of a situation. Emil Odoka is a rookie head coach, right? This was his first year on the Boston Celtics. Jason Tatum is still relatively young. He just got his first NBA, his first team all NBA. Yeah. Robert Williams is a young player and he showed a lot of promise with his defense and blocking ability. Jalen Brown, of course, is a great player. I see him to be 
a top five shooting guard in the league. And Marcus Smart is still young too. Th this team is a young core, so they have a future. All they have to do is stay together and everything will work out just fine. I can see them winning the championship probably within the next three, four years. So they could. let's not beat it up. But all the credit goes to the Golden State Warriors because Steph Curry got how many titles on him? Tell the, tell the people. Tell the good people how many he got. Right. Four, right? One, two, three, four, guys. Right. You know what? Just as many as LeBron James. What does that mean? I mean, yeah, he do. You know. And Steph Curry gets a lot of credit. He deserves all the credit for having four championships. But why you bring up LeBron? Because, you know, there is a new king in town. And, and get, go deeper into that. What you mean by that? It means that there is already players that are coming for his legacy just like that. All right, so let me just school you again because I knew he was going to be one of those people to bring this up. So Steph Curry is a great player. And I think the championship that LeBron got with the Lakers stamped his legacy. Him getting one more would just kind of solidify anything about him being the GOAT, really, if LeBron was to get one more. But since we're going to bring this up, and you know, people want to compare Steph Curry to LeBron James, so this is what LeBron has over Steph Curry in their career. So LeBron has two more MVPs, three more finals MVPs, 10 more All-Star nominations, 10 more All-NBA selections, and six more all defensive teams. Okay, well, so as a Steph Curry has a phenomenal career. It can be up with anybody. It's already given him top two best point guards of all time. But to even be compared to LeBron James is not even close. Bro. It's not. So let's give credit where credit is due with Steph Curry winning his title in his fourth championship, and he might even get five. If he gets five, he'll, he'll be the best point guard of all time, in my opinion. Magic Johnson is great, phenomenal, but if he gets five, he'll be the best point guard of all time. And so, but then let's also mention this too. Steph Curry had a historic season. Not only did he break the record for most threes ever, he won a championship to top it all off. That's greatness. It is. And we got to give it to him. That's all I got to say, man. That's really all I got to say in regards to him winning a title this year. And I don't want to just put it on just on Steph Curry because obviously the Warriors couldn't win it without Clay because as soon as he comes back, first season he comes back, he wins the title. Draymond Green. Obviously, the energizer bunny of that team deserves credit for being on the defensive end. Steph Curry was just playing simple the face of the franchise. And also, let's not forget about Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, second year into his career, and he had a phenomenal postseason. Without him, they wouldn't even gotten this far also. So with the addition of Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole, and with Gary Payton coming off the bench, giving you plus minus. I got to say, Bob Myers really did a fantastic job of putting this roster together. And so before we top it off, I just want to give you guys some more facts and stats that the Warriors have done for this historic championship title. So in the last nine seasons, only three teams have won a championship and have been out-rebounded in the finals. And those three teams were the Warriors in 2015, 2018, and 2022. And not to mention, the Warriors big three have more championships than Jordan, Pimpin, and Rodman, Kareem, Magic, and Worthy, and Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish. Like I said, this Warrior big three is one of the greatest big three in NBA history. And I said, and here, I say it again.
Got anything else you want to say? I want to also give a shout out, of course, to the coach. Got to mention the head coach, Steve Kerr, who also done a tremendous job with the team. I mean, one more chip and he'll have a ring on every finger. He's going to be the Lord of the Rings. He can make a whole Thanos gluffing with the rings. I don't know, but yeah, it's going to be incredible. I mean, he'll have half of them as a player and half of them as a coach. That is true. It's true indeed. But this concludes our episode for Cash Sports. We hope you enjoyed it. This was the end of the NBA playoffs and the NBA season. And you finally got to see who ended up being champion. And it was the Golden State Warriors. Thank you guys for watching our video. Like I said again, if you like our content, please like, comment, subscribe. If you want more Cashport content, we love you guys. Stay tuned for the next video.